I'm just dragging him around like a rat doll. Hello everyone, my name's Kai Zamist and I'm a director, cinematographer and writer and today, thanks to you guys, we're going to be looking at the Horace Heresy cinematic trailer. But first, before I give you my reaction and breakdown, we need to hear about today's video sponsor and it's a good one, it's Gothic Jewelry. Well, I'm going to head over to her website now at gothic.com, so that's gthic.com and yes, you can find a link for that in the video description down below and let's take a look, shall we? Okay, I've clicked the link and it appears there's a Halloween sale on. Nice. How amazing does that look? But check this out, Cheetor Maximize. Out of curiosity, I've clicked the apparel page and I've already fallen in love with one of the shirts. Skulls, floral, yes please. I'm absolutely shocked at the variety on this. Look at this, rings, pendants, earrings, bracelets, apparel, and Halloween costumes. I'm on the lookout for some new rings, so let's check those out, shall we? This is very me, my cup of tea. I'm getting Lord of the Ring vibes here and I think that is awesome. I can tell you right now, that this ring will be mine. All right, I'm gonna play some orders and I'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. And after a little while of waiting, look what showed up. Ba -ba. Yeah, it's really nice, lovely little box. It's really well presented inside when I got it. I decided to go for that flat ring that I mentioned. I, as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. The other ring I went for in the end um, is I went for this skull ring. Absolutely gorgeous, I really, really like this one. Look at that bracelet, love it. The moment I saw it, I was like, yes got to have me some of that all right there you go you've got all the information you know what to do the link is down below and don't forget to use the code filmmaker at checkout to get 20 percent off right then let's get on with it shall we play the tape warhammer that's an interesting first shot i never wanted this why is I wanted to unleash my legions? Whoa. Together we banished the ignorance of old night. Oh, that is massive. You betrayed me. You betrayed us all. Oh shit, he's dragging me around like a rat doll. You power from the gods and lied to your sons. Mankind has only one chance to prosper. If you will not seize it, then I will! Fuck the size of it all! So let it be war! Oh, mate! Wow, I love that Mad Max vibe from that. The skies of terror to the galactic rim. Wow, I thought that was corkscrewing. This is great, all the different settings. Oh my god, look at that shot. Let the seas boil. Let the stars fall. So it takes the last drop of my blood. It's insane. I will see the galaxy freed once more. And if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, he's a hoes. Galaxy burn. Man, he's a beast. Warhammer, the Horus Heresy. Wow. I couldn't even talk through that. Not that I wanted to talk anyway, but. There was so much going on. Wow, I think I might have to watch that about another three times to fully actually understand what the hell was going on. It was just pure carnage throughout the whole thing. Some of those shots were stunning, as in if I close my eyes, I could actually still see the shots. They were that good, as in the cinematography. But yeah, let's go more into it as I break it down. So to start the breakdown off, let's talk about how we heard the character before we saw him. And what does that mean? If you hear a character before you see the character in film or storytelling, it normally tells the audience member that that character is important or is an integral part to the story. What I love about films that where you hear the world before you see it is it immediately draws you in as an audience member. With all the stories that I tell either in film, commercials, whatever it may be, my preferred way is to draw my audience in by letting you hear the sounds of the world or the characters first and then you see them. 
in commercials it's a bit more harder because obviously you've got 30 seconds or 45 seconds or whatever it may be you've got to be bang 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 with the music and whatnot but with this we had the logo pop up we heard the battlegrounds or the scenes going on and then we heard his footsteps come in and then you had the payoff of his voice i never wanted this by having all these elements together so the sound of the world the walking of the character we see the character and then we hear the character what that does is by having all those together it allows us to have that instant connection with this character Horace and we wouldn't have had that or it wouldn't have been as strong if we didn't have all those elements coming together an opening shot an establishing shot can absolutely be crucial when expressing or telling the audience member of the world where they're invited to and this was no different. The opening shot to this told us absolutely loads. It immediately told me as an audience member that what well, it actually set the tone of what this cinematic is going to be. And it's Warhammer, and I expect nothing less with Warhammer. It's a dark world, it's always a dark universe, and the opening shot completely complemented that. This opening also gives our lead character a power level within the world. And what I mean by that is immediately, well, I know nothing of this universe, or at least this character at least, and immediately watching, I can tell that he is ridiculously powerful or he's someone that you shouldn't mess with. Continuing on with the power status, the power level of the lead character, Horace. Every time we saw him throughout the film, he was always shot from below. So the camera was looking up at him. Even his close up, it was just below his eye level. But why is that a big deal? Why does that make a difference? By shooting a character from below, so aiming the camera up at a character or subject, it gives them visual power. Firefighters, for example, official photography will always shoot up or be below the eye line or the eye level of the firefighter. They're brave, they're strong, they risk their life to save others, they're powerful. So photography videographers, they'll shoot up to make sure you as an audience member know that. This is filmmaking, so we've got to talk about the lighting and the atmosphere and what the filmmakers did to enhance the story. This is a villain story, it's a bad guy. Bad guys are normally associated with darkness. And so cinematography wise, they complemented that and the visual style by having it and shooting it in a low key lighting. Low key lighting is a cinematography style which accentuates shadows, high contrast and the dark tones. And by being low key, it helps with the world building. What I mean by world building is the universe or the Warhammer universe. It's building the world that we're invited to. Every scene within this cinematic is dark. Actually, I say that, one of them isn't. It's like the one that I mentioned about Mad Max. That's, I think that's more the, the teal and orange look, the American look, which I absolutely love. And that's actually, believe it or not, that's actually my favorite shot in the entire cinematic. Except for the teal and orange scene, every other scene is black and or dark. And what they have there is they have a supporting color to help tell us audience members it's a different world. I'm guessing it's a different world or it's a different part of the universe. So we had, what do we have? We had blue, we had green, we had white, we had orange, and we had brown. There's probably loads more colors in there, but they're the main ones that I saw that told me, oh, we're in a different place or a different part of the universe. But yeah, it was always dark, always black, and then you had a supporting color. And speaking of color, the filmmakers used red at the beginning of the film to tell us, the audience members, that this is a villain story or support that it's a villain story. Red light, red world, red blood and lastly about the cinematography and my favorite thing on set haze or smoke or fog every shot in this cinematic had the use of haze smoke or fog i'm just going to keep saying haze rather than going through all three of them again but the use of haze is there to make your shots more dense it thickens the air it allows us to see the light beams the light particles within the air it makes the world more believable it gives the shots loads of texture which is absolutely beautiful it also allows the laser beams and the hot spots within the shot, so the laser swords or whatever it may be, to really stand out, to be really seen. And that's the use of haze or smoke. Another thing that is great for is to hide detail within a shot. So unfinished textures or model or renders of models that are not quite ready yet. Or these four characters in the background and there's one up front that's really sharp, but the four in the background don't need to be. Are they not finished yet? Do you know what? Put some haze on it or smoke, you're not going to notice. Another thing that hides detail, especially when it comes to CGI, is black or darkness. Astartes, for example, it had a ton of darkness in there. The storyteller used it to hide the detail on the models or to potentially spend time in other areas that are in the light. So yeah, so 
darkness and haze is fantastic for hiding things or whatever it may be but primarily what you use haze for is to make your shots more badass every shot with a bit of smoking always looks chef's kiss it just looks 20 times better and lastly the voice i've got to talk about him he was fantastic every line i felt it the pain the anger he was just brilliant i think it really hit home today or it's perfect for today watching because i've been actually looking at voiceover artists all day looking for the current projects that i'm working on and i'm a big believer of you will always find the right voice or the right actor for the job or the story or character that you want to tell and whoever they cast for this he was brilliant he he made this cinematic as far as i'm concerned voiceover in story writing is basically known as the voice of god they are there to give you tidbits they are there to give you nuggets of information not to tell you the whole story just little bits and then it's backed up with the visual elements in this case he gave us a bit of backstory he didn't want to do this he didn't want to release his legion he also told us what he's capable of and they showed it visually and then he told us what he's going to do what i loved about this part is they foreshadowed his intentions visually just before they backed it up with the voice of god telling us that he's going to watch the galaxy burn or he's going to burn the galaxy what a fantastic villain and what a brilliant cinematic and again if it wasn't for you guys i would have never have seen it so but really kudos to you thumbs up well done and there you have it that was my reaction and breakdown to the horace heresy cinematic i really hope you enjoyed today's video guys and if you did give it a thumbs up as it really does help out the channel and would you like to see some more well over there i've got to put another reaction video for you i'll see you next time Bye bye